At Consumer Cellular, you get the same exact coverage as the largest carriers, but for up to half the cost. Same thing, up to half the cost. Up to half the cost for the same thing. 50% the money for 100% the same thing. I hope I'm making myself clear. Consumer Cellular. When freedom calls, we're here to answer. Call us at 1-888-FREEDOM. Half the cost savings based on cost of Consumer Cellular single line 5 gigabyte data plan with unlimited talk and text compared to lowest cost single line postpaid unlimited talk text and data plan offered by T-Mobile and Verizon May 2023. You're listening to a Mint Podcast brought to you by HD Smartcast. Hello listeners. Welcome to the latest episode of Why Not Mint Money. I'm your host, Josh Kriplani. Amid an uncertain market environment, mutual funds are looking to offer low-risk options to investors. Several fund houses are launching multi-asset funds, which diversify across different asset classes to reduce single-asset class risk. In today's episode, we are joined by Anthony Haredia, MD and CEO of Mahindra Manulife Mutual Fund, to decode what investors can expect from the different multi-asset funds that are operating in the industry. Welcome to Why Not Mint Money, a personal finance podcast where we help you understand basic money concepts and share strategies for you to build your wealth. So let's get started with your money journey. So Anthony, we wanted to chat with you today about multi-asset funds. Right now, we are seeing a lot of interest in multi-asset funds from both investors as well as from the fund house side. Why is that? Can you share your thoughts on this? I would say there are a number of reasons. I don't think there's one singular reason. I think the first is, is there a potential alternative to, you know, equity, which perhaps comes at lower volatility, but still aims to deliver returns that are higher than inflation, perhaps not as exciting as equity, but is there a potential product that can meet those requirements? The second is Fixed income, especially after the tax law changes in March or April and leading up to the early part of this year where there is a wide expectation that we will start to see interest rates coming off is a good opportunity, but perhaps from a tax post-tax perspective is not as great. Is there another opportunity or a product that can perhaps provide an alternative? And I would say if you mix both of the two together, then Multi-asset as a category is probably a product that is probably the the most appropriate product that provides a reasonable answer to both of those questions being raised. And the third element being that, you know, if you actually start looking at statistics, you discover that I think because of how the dollar rupee or the currency gain has transpired over the last so many years and decades, Gold is a very, very decent and interesting opportunity as well. So if you bundle all of these things together, can I access equity, but perhaps at lower levels of risk? Can I take advantage of lowering fixed income or interest rates and provide some kind of stable, but a little bit of excitement to fixed income? And can I have an element of gold that provides, you know, a slightly more enduring longer term uh, perspective? I think multi-asset is a category that probably answers that and which is why you see a rising amount of interest amongst investors and obviously, therefore, the fund houses themselves, you know, making sure that they have the right products in that space. Right. For the benefit of our listeners, can you break down how a multi-asset fund works? Where does it invest? What are the segments or asset classes it invests in and what are the asset classes it stays away from. Can you break it down for us? Let me start just with the technical definition in terms of what SEBI allows multi-asset funds to do or ensures that they do at a bare minimum, which is all multi-asset funds should always at any point in time have at least three asset classes represented in the portfolio with the minimum allocation to each asset class being at least 10%. So that's the first starting point. Second, if you had to have three asset classes, obviously the core asset classes that we would expect to be represented are equity, fixed income, and gold. Now, because this is multi-asset, what are the other asset classes potentially that can deliver returns to a customer over time? I would say there would be two other asset classes that come immediately to mind. One would be commodities, and the second would be real estate. 
so to some degree i would say a multi asset product therefore is something that over time in its portfolio will have exposures to equity fixed income and gold as a primary construct and will have tactical allocations perhaps to commodities and real estate as a secondary construct you mix all of these things together to kind of ensure that you deliver a risk return kind of profile to the customer that helps them deal with long term goals that they want to achieve and also mahindra manual life is uh, going to be launching uh, a multi asset fund uh, in a day or two uh, so how is that fund going to be structured uh, where will it invest in what allocation what proportions uh, can you take us through that Yes, sir. So, yeah, we are quite excited. We have a launch of a multi-asset fund starting tomorrow. There again, I will use that the is same that is on just to be specific. That is twenty eighth Feb, right? Is when you yeah, that's twenty eighth Feb to fifth March. So twenty. That's the NFO uh, period. That's the NFO period, and then obviously right. it opens for ongoing subscriptions pretty much in the week after that. So okay. the primary construct again, like I explained, will be equity, fixed income, and gold. We would believe that. equity we would look depending on what markets valuations the models that we use tell us range between 35 to 80% at any point in time uh fixed income will range from a minimum of 10% which i explained was a sebi construct to probably a maximum of 50 55% and gold would be between 10 to maybe 30% that would be the primary construct the secondary construct that we would believe we will use over time i don't expect that we will use it pretty much in the first 3 to 6 months is looking at potentially anything between 0 to 20% in a mix of real estate which we would probably do via real estate investment trust commodities which you can do through commodity etfs where the primary focus for us would be either silver because silver if you look at it has some very interesting correlations with gold per se and oil which we believe is a very important commodity which has a correlation or a, a diversification to how the indian economy and therefore equity markets do and the third bucket over time will potentially when limits etc open would be international equity as well because again the idea is can you diversify such that you deliver an optimal return but through that diversification you are basically cutting down potentially the risk of achieving that return so that's really what we look to do primary construct like i said equity fixed income and gold secondary construct hey, can you silver, just recap recap oil. the rough allocations please anthony so the, the rough allocations would be equity would be 35 to 80% Okay. And given where our models are currently, we think equity will be in any case closer to fifty fifty five percent in okay. terms of allocation. Okay. Fixed income would range between ten to fifty five percent, and we think at this juncture it's probably closer to maybe twenty twenty five percent. And gold, silver, and other commodities minimum of ten percent can go up to thirty five percent. At okay. this juncture, we think we'll be probably between ten to twenty percent in terms of gold, silver. Right. we don't expect at the in the initial months to do commodity etfs and obviously given that limits are at this point not available international right. equities perhaps will not happen at least in 24 right so what kind of tax treatment would this translate into for the investor the tax treatment to just for us would be the hybrid taxation which means that if an investor holds it for 3 years right. or more effectively right. gets treated as indexation benefit and post okay. indexation 20% okay. which is kind of roughly equivalent to close to 10% but obviously if an investor holds it for less than 3 years then the investor right. pays the marginal rate of tax now the right. next question would be why have you chosen this tax rate wouldn't you have rather chosen the equity taxation route two reasons mm-hmm. one is if i have to do justice to multi asset meaning mm-hmm. really take advantage of dislocations in asset prices or opportunities right. i need to have the ability to be meaningful in these asset classes right so right. that is the first so you first make a product you focus on what returns you can generate you yeah. focus on the tax that the customer pays after that right you first right. generate the returns then only the question of tax comes so that's the route we took just i know you and i are followers of football no so yeah. let me give you analogy from a footballing perspective 
Sure. So I can construct a team. Every football team obviously has forwards, midfielders, and defenders, right? Right. Think of that as equity, fixed income, and gold. Now, am I constructing a team that says I will score more goals than you at any point in time? So therefore, I put my team full of attackers. Think of it as equity. Or do I believe that I have a slightly more balanced framework? I have stars across my defense, across my midfield, across my equity and my aim is primarily to eventually win the game right, right? at right. the end of the 90 minutes my right. aim is not to win the game in the first half and right. so i think we are probably taking that route right. that our our team is filled with forwards midfielders and defenders we are not going with a forward heavy strategy right again that's a very good way of explaining how you guys will be working with your fund but for the benefit of listeners and since this category is now being tracked and people are a lot more interested can you also help our listeners understand how the multi asset fund ecosystem works how different mafs are differently designed and have different allocations can you tell us about their equity allocation debt allocation and you know how how does the maths work for from the industry perspective because there are so many mafs already out there no great question jash and i i think for investors that's a bit of a struggle right because right. let me give you a simple example i'll give you an analogy first right i right. have a large cap fund you have I'm a large cap fund i'm disappointed it's not another football analogy <laughs> ah okay <laughs> no, no it's fine it's perfectly fine yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know my large cap fund will be 80% invested in stocks in the first 100 your large okay. cap fund will be exactly the same But when it comes to multi asset that's no longer the same construct right so i would break multi assets that i have seen in the industry into three parts right one is the multi asset funds that are i would say forward heavy so okay. they are choosing to be 65% gross equity in gross in equity sure which effectively i would believe therefore those will be slightly more aggressive maps and would be an equity minus strategy Okay. On the other spectrum, I've seen a few players choose the defender-heavy strategy. Right? Don't concede a goal first, and then try and score a goal on the on the counter attack. So right. you effectively have a product which is hugging the thirty-five percent equity more often than not, and using right. arbitrage as a portion of that. And the large portion of your return is being driven by fixed income, and then a slight allocation to gold. Right. And the so that is the second category, which is a debt. or a very conservative multi asset fund the right. third is the one that we are looking at which is kind of the balanced one which is i will be between 35 to 80% in equity based on the opportunity i see right i will be between 10 to 55 in fixed income based on the opportunity i see so that's kind of a balanced approach to saying right. over time my fund will sit between fixed income and equity in terms right. of a from a investor construct standpoint so these i would say are the three buckets of multi asset funds i'll just end with one statement yeah. i i think it's useful for a customer to have all three types in his or her portfolio yeah. but one additional statement i would definitely make is you must have a multi asset or a couple of multi asset funds in your portfolio because i think in the last one year if i look at just the industry flows yeah. virtually 95% of it is in equity and i think if one thing i've learned over 30 years in this business diversification is worth its weight in gold you know excuse the pun and so it's important to kind of allocate more money to multi asset funds not just to small cap mid cap multi cap flexi cap sure sure and anthony one more thing if we can you know quickly recap because this has become slightly technical category also from investors perspective after taxation changes so i'm just trying to summarize how taxation works in this category if the if the math is investing up to 35% in equity it will be there won't be any indexation benefit as it was earlier if it is 35 you get indexation benefit if you hold on to the investments for more than 3 years so 20% plus indexation benefit if i'm correct and if you if your math is investing 65% in equity what you get is equity taxation benefit ltcg which is after one year of holding 10% tax on the gains right yes just absolutely well captured i mean one of the other ways to say it's it's so below 35 35 yeah. and 65 these are the three operative terms i will hazard one comment a uh, bit of fortune telling 
Right. Uh, you see the statements that the finance minister has been making in consecutive budgets over the last two or three years. Yeah. The government is going on record saying we believe investment products should be bought on merit of the product, not on the tax arbitrage. Right. Right. So right. I would tell investors be quite careful. Don't don't focus on the tax because those tax arbitrages probably right. two three years down the line, when right. it's time for you to redeem, may not actually exist. Right. So go with. the investment merit of the product leave the tax to a point when you've actually made a return and anthony you know probably closing comments how should an investor uh, look at maf in terms of what returns the investor can expect and what kind of investor should go for maf because of course there are still uh, people who can handle the equity related volatility who have the uh, capacity to hold on to the equity investment for the longer term and and as we all always say that over time the volatility linked to equity eventually evens out and of course returns are returns are are decent i mean from if we look at other developed markets so any any kind of closing guidance for our listeners on that so just indulge me a little bit i'll give you two answers one with yes. a sporting analogy again and then sure. one a little more financial in nature sure the sport i'll pick this time is tennis right so okay. india from an economy perspective long term looks like a great story no doubt about it right so fundamentally equity is the best way to play it so think mm-hmm. of it saying that i am a player who likes to play tennis full stop yeah yeah right right but we both know that the style of tennis you play on a grass court is slightly different from a clay court it's slightly different from a hard court right and to our mind over the next 3 to 5 years the playing surface is going to keep changing from grass to clay to mm-hmm. hard courts and effectively that's why you use multi asset which basically changes your playing style slightly you're still the same player but you orient your playing style from serve and volley to baseline to whatever else it is to make sure that eventually at the end of those 3 or 5 years you are a good tennis player and you have a strong ranking that's the objective come in terms of financial terms i would say that if your belief or most people's consensus belief is that over a 5 year period equity should deliver slightly higher than double digit returns so let's say 12% compounded then i would believe maths which are and a bucket maths especially the equity oriented and the balance types like we are doing into one bucket i mm-hmm. think maths will come in at a percent or two below that okay. with probably 50% less rt that's the way i would position it okay. right because okay. we keep using the word risk risk is a financial term mm-hmm. i kind of describe risk is as the ability to sleep soundly at night okay right and, and sure. let's say that is our take in that sense So one two percent lower return potentially at fifty percent of the heartache, or yeah. the ability to sleep soundly is what I would describe yeah. a MAF return expectation to be. Right, right, right. Well, I don't know much about sleep since I have a newborn at home, so that will take time for me to but, figure but out. Just, just if I may, I, I, I've been through this. If I may make you yeah. feel better, I just yeah. discuss three to five years when, when she's or he's. Five she years is, old, yeah, yeah. then she, she, this will become relevant, right? right of now, right. now it feels like this is not a grass court. This is not a hard court. <laughs> this is, this seems like I'm playing tennis in a badminton court. <laughs> right, 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 right. Sure. Anything else you wanted to add, Anthony? Not really. I like I said, I'm just reiterating. I think think yeah. of multi asset virtually as a product that everybody must have. If there's one product, I believe. Yeah, will be a central figure in the mutual fund industry 20, 30, 40 years from now. It is this product. Fashion will change from small, mid, mid cap, large cap, etc., etc. But multi asset will become a core category, just like it is globally, right? In in the right. globe, amongst large asset managers, right. asset allocation or multi asset portions are virtually, in many cases, almost as large as their equity and fixed income. It's so almost like a third significant asset class, and I believe that will happen in this category over the next couple of decades. Thanks a lot for joining us today, and that's a very nice way to end this conversation. We have to see how the industry evolves, how Indian investors evolve, where do they move to an asset allocation category like multi asset funds. But great, Anthony, great having you here, and thanks for sharing all those insights. 
thank you listeners for joining us today if you liked this episode and would like to hear to more such interesting conversations do log into our channel why not mint money on spotify where you'd always find me omnipresent also if you have any new ideas or suggestions you can dm me on twitter my twitter handle is at the rate jash kriplani that is j a s h k r i p l a n i you can always reach out to us over the email our email id is mintmoney@rateliveman.com to stay updated on this podcast follow us at hd smartcast on all the major social media platforms to listen to more such podcasts log on to www.hdsmartcast.com